Stephen wasn't able to make it, so we have Angus filling in to for him. Uh, I actually don't know that much about heat, but I know that everyone's talking about it, so I'm very interested to understand where this orchestration set of tools fits into the cloud and sounds like a very active and uh, important project, so hand it over to Angus. Uh, thank you. So, yeah, um, I'm not going to give the uh, demo today as, uh, because uh, Steve had prepared that and unfortunately I only figured out that I was going to do this last night, so uh, it will probably be a little shorter. So, um, so both Steve and I are core developers on Heat Project. Um, the, the, heat, the mission for Heat is, is was initially to provide an AWS cloud formation interface for OpenStack. Uh, of course, we had plans to uh, initially have plans to use to eventually implement Posca as well, um, but we haven't got to it. I don't seem to have seen the drive from users. But if are there other formats uh, of template-based orchestration come along, or is it So the way uh, this all works is you have a template um, and it has parameters, which are user parameters that you apply. Um, and uh, through the template, you go and create a stack. So the template has different sections in it. Uh, there's a parameters section that defines what parameters you can pass into the template. And it has a mapping section, which you can use as a lookup table, essentially, from, from the template. And there's the resources, which are all the resources like instances, volumes, uh, volume maps. Um, so those are the real things that, that you are interested in. There's also an output section as well. Uh, once the stack is created, you can basically have references to the instance to show the generated IP addresses, the bubble, and stuff. Um, so what you then do on the right is uh, you pass the user defined parameters into the CLI and pass that off to the cloud formation API. Um, so here we are. We have um, cloud formation template API. Um, that's some lifecycle operation to create, delete, update, and uh, some introspection. So uh, if we list, just to list the uh, stack that you have created, Describes, uh, brings out all the state information of the stack, like uh, current running state and all, all the resources. And the events are generally in the order of if a certain resource has been initialized, and then a running state or a failed state. So uh, this could be able to get quite a bit of information out of it. Uh, so just a look inside what a template is. So we have the parameter section, and basically it's the definition of uh, key values there, and it's a description saying what it is, and type, default, cloud value. Just so, uh, there's also a, a heat validate, so you can go and validate your template to make sure that everything that you're passing in uh, will actually at least pass. Um, here we have the mappings, an example of the idea is that this is used from uh, your EC2 image definition, and you need the image ID, and it's just a convenient way of converting uh, from a size in, in architecture into an image map. So on the right hand, very right, you'll see FX Gaming X Editor for CMS Tools. That is a, a name of an image that you've registered in the blog. Here are the, some resources. Basically, so there's EIP, which is Elastic IP, and um, there's an instance. So there's just an association. So the way this would work is um, it would go through and figure out the dependency, see that I, I need to first create the Elastic IP, and uh, then I would need to make the instance, and then associate the Elastic IP running instance with the Elastic IP. That's all done using uh, Python and Pine. So an overview of the architecture is um, the API, 
rich farmer and his engine and metadata. That metadata has a bunch of things rolled into it and that has subsequently been pulled out in uh, CloudWatch daemon as well. But basically things that are on your VM and needed to talk to CP, talk to that data. So um, the template goes ba basically directly to the API and goes through any call and pause. Calculates the starting order of all the resources and goes through that and uh, sequentially goes and applies the data. Well, that's on Amazon. <laughs> and this is sitting on top of OpenStack. Um, and the idea is that you could get a template that you're using and throw that in there. Need maybe a little bit of tweaking, maybe some flavors, but uh, relatively little tweaking. So um, we start off with a base image, which is called Geoff, which is our operating system. And on that base instance, a base image, we have Cloud Init and our own version of DNS tools. Um, so we currently support uh, Fedora 67 10. Um, and as people need, we kind of have a base image. But, uh, so what happens is Cloud Init starts and runs the metadata and uh, stores the information therein. So to create the image, we've got a tool that um, helps you uh, create that, that field. So um, we've got a, basically a, a library of Oz C CDLs. We all know what Oz is. So it's a way to have uh, an XML template and create and install a uh, solution. Um, so that's done that way. And you can also um, use Oz directly. So also what we do is uh, our open source tool which we have created basically plants with the correct name so that when a template gets uh, created, it'll find the correct image and plant it and start up the project with the right name. So as far as uh, scaling goes, um, the way we work that is um, through the hashing of the stack name. So a load balancer, hash your API, and uh, just send it out to the correct uh, engine component, given the stack name. Uh, actually, it's actually looking after that stack. So it's just scaling on top of open stack. So resource type. Um, uh, Amazon has a lot of resource type. We don't implement them all, and some are partially or simplistically done. But the main ones are done quite well. And as people want, we um, add more. So um, the main one is volume and instance are all implemented fine. And uh, there are some that we don't do. I think we still need to do some work with quantum. Uh, So on the left there, the red ones are mostly quantum related features that we um, have or commercially supported. But uh, order scaling, stack, weight conditions, volume, that's the type we use. So I mean, it takes time. And since, since the Amazon API is so broad and a lot of those uh, services are just available in open stack, we need to back fill that. So the demonstration I'm not going to give, but it's, it gives you an example of um, functional 
what snippets of, of a, a template. Um, you can see the user guide from the left there. Basically, it's just a bash script that gets updated. Um, so it's setting up MySQL. Uh, then on the right, this is also the same thing, but using a message stack, which is a bit like Keynote. So you can, what you can do is create, uh, if you use a, a particular kind of setup often, you can create a message stack and have parameters passed in, and then pull that from another template. And so that usually uses a library. So we also have high availability, which is um, our own site, which we keep and put on as Bayview Starter. So effectively, we use CloudWatch uh, to monitor the instance. And um, if a heartbeat doesn't come in time, uh, it creates an alarm. And the action is call the restarter resource, which just destroys the instance and then recreates it. So it's very simple. Uh, simplistic H HA, but um, we can't do it that simple. So, um, and another nice feature is auto scaling. Um, again, using CloudWatch, um, what we do is using uh, scale up and scale down, monitor it, and you can see it's right there uh, for a period of 60 seconds, and it's averaging on the average of six seconds. Over 50% scale up. So, this is not meant to be a uh, particularly clever example, just to demonstrate on this type of thing. So, it, it, obviously, you would have a scale down as well. Yeah. Other spots. So, again, the scale adjustment here is minus one, so scaling down. So, it basically, would just get the bottom instance that you created and destroy it. So in closing, um, we think it's a cool project and it's uh, continuously improving in functionality. And uh, if you're a user or developer, come get stuck in. Um, as sheet on Freenode, uh, we're on GitHub. And since I didn't have a demo, I really encourage you to ask questions. Well, I think the, the neat feature of them is uh, of the template is an action tab re like OpenStack resources, so like Elastic IP and you know advanced function network and all in one file. So yeah, we can do packaging, but other things probably can do it better. But it's the complete solution. Uh, you can have a multi-instance running system with all in all the other bits and pieces like volumes you know, and, and all of that in one place. And it's not just uh, you know, something for a order. Technology or specification or just adopting? So it's it's basically uh, adopting their specification API and it's improving. Um, and, and as soon as we can get stuck into other apps, some come along that, that um, we've got some stuff in there. So, so the goal is really uh, orchestration from the get go, more than cloud containers. We've done it because it's been very probably widely used around. Not really related. We use native uh, Nova Python clients to create and deploy resources. We don't use the uh, API itself, not as a user. I think that's probably the best way to do it. Yeah, uh, well, mo the monitoring currently is uh, done in-host, sorry, in, in, the, in the VM. 
So basically, uh, you've got is post uh, statistics to the CloudWatch server, and uh, that's the way it gets it. Or we're um, going to work with Solometry to uh, generalize the instrumentation that they're creating to uh, so that we can use that in human replication. Hopefully, eventually, in, uh, force our CloudWatch instrumentation to use the same thing. So that's that's going to be a Yeah, it's a minimalist proof of concept currently, and we uh, had a lot of sessions upstairs basically trying to, first of all, see whether we need to go into the telemetry or not, and secondly, what is missing. Sorry, M Melton? Um, yeah, oh, and Okay, so the templates, uh, so he asked, does it include multi-node deployment? And do you mean from the, uh, from within the template you can have multiple instances? So absolutely, uh, that's. Yes, yes, absolutely. I think that's what the main purpose of it is. Um, uh, so you, you and you have all the dependencies too. So you start off a database server, database instance with the server, you configure it, uh, you get this IP, you have to wait for that to be created, then you start up your web server and give it its IP so it can talk, um, wait for it to be, it's got wait conditions that are implemented, uh, so it makes sure that it's completely ready before you start any maintenance. What do you mean by a child parent? Yes. Getting you when you when you say child and parent, what the instances that are created? Yeah. So on the host, on the bare metal. Oh, you meant with an initial image that you register. Once it's a nested stack, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, look, if you go in and break something and it doesn't function, um, I, I suppose it's up to you to monitor that and to figure out that it's broken. It's not going to, uh, you know, it knows the state of the VM, uh, and the VMs may be running great, but, you know, it's because they can't get each other, well, you know, no one's, no one's going to know it's just you. And the other aspect of that is the user then can't get into that VM. It's up to you to try to do it. Hang on. Okay. So you've given that right and so wrong. So 
I suppose along those lines, the, the other thing to be looking at is the, the Wolsey is the, the Australian Willow Balancer. That's my kind of thing. And something on that DM probe, you know, it's not exactly uh, fault that it went wrong. Yeah, usually it's created with the user that created the stack, and that's also kind of an interesting perspective. You don't want uh, that user to start it to belong to someone else. It belongs to the person who created that resource. So we create a, a tenant for each uh, stack, and uh, so. Um, what it'll do is roll back. So the point is, I mean, that is one of the main use cases is LT instance and LT resource uh, creation. So um, it will figure out the dependency order and roll through, and if something fails, it will delete. There is an option, which I think must implemented currently, which is um, part in the command line, is to say, don't you know, clean up, so you can perhaps diagnose and figure out what content is messed up. Yeah, delete as because otherwise you, I mean, if you're using a web like Horizon, you want to back test necessarily, or you want to know what you what exactly has started. Uh, you might, but the, the idea is to, if it fails, um, gives enough information to figure out what is wrong with it. Perhaps there's a, ro a, a bug in the template, and you can either fix that and try again, um, or you can let it let it sit there for some time and long enough that that resource is fixed and figure out what's wrong. Okay, well, I suppose I'm done. If there's any more questions. All right, thanks, Angus. <laughs> there's uh, one last session in about 20 minutes, um, and then it's the... Marantis's um